Good day, everyone. Today's lesson is going to be about macromolecules. We are creating individual lessons for each macromolecule, one for carbohydrates, one for lipids, one for proteins, one for uh, nucleic acids. This one is about lipids. All right, so you can remember that carbohydrates is just a fancy name for sugars, and lipids, of course, is the fancy name for fats. We are going to start by pointing out some similarities and differences between lipids and carbohydrates. Let's start with the similarities. They both contain carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. They are both an important source of energy. And they both play an important role in a structural function. Wait a minute. Hmm, you may say, well, I, I thought proteins were the macromolecules that were, you know, important for structural function. Well, let me tell you, sugars, carbohydrates, and lipids are also important for the structure. Wouldn't you agree that the woody part of a, of a plant, the woody part of a tree, is very important for the structure of that plant or that tree as well? A structural function in the cell membrane um, in terms of lipids lipids are an extremely important part of the cell membrane every cell membrane so therefore there is also an important role in the structure and in terms of source of energy both are sources of energy but carbohydrates are considered short term and lipids are considered long term besides you will have more energy per gram in lipids than in carbohydrates. The basic structure of a triglyceride is as follows. It's uh, made out of uh, one main glycerol molecule, which is a three-carbon molecule. Uh, these carbons, each one of them, have an hydroxide group and hydrogen uh, I, um, atoms. So this one, for instance, can be drawn as this hydroxide 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 and two more hydrogens on the extremes one more over here so this is the glycerol structure but it's a triglyceride because we have also three fatty acids. These fatty acids, they uh, contain uh, mainly, um, let's say these have five, four, six uh, carbon chains. This has five, let's say this one has six. I'm just making this up. But this is just to show the basic structure of the uh, fatty acids. The important part is that they have right here at the extreme another hydroxide group and of course a hydrogen bond. Hydroxide, hydroxide, don't forget the hydrogen here. We will ignore the hydrogen bonds, they are not very important. Many textbooks uh, avoid them, they just do the carbon atoms, but anyways, so we need to put these uh, molecules together, so what we have right now is this glycerol molecule and three fatty acids, but we need to put them together, we need to hook this up, so what we're going to do is something called dehydration synthesis, uh, some textbooks, uh, especially if they are like college level, they can call it condensation synthesis. But, but I think it, dehydration synthesis will be fine. So, uh, of course, as the, nom as the name says, dehydration synthesis because they involve tada, water. So here you can see that these molecules are going to combine by uh, joining these chains to the glycerol and in the process they will lose water 
like in this case there is one water molecule exiting from here same from here and same from here all right so there you go dehydration synthesis to make this triglyceride something similar happens in the formation of carbohydrates uh, uh, and the process is called the same dehydration synthesis so this is in some instances is going to look like a review for you if you already saw one of the other uh, macromolecules so let's bring a more neat picture of a triglyceride okay this is a better better picture to see the synthesis of a triglyceride so again here we have uh, here we have this uh, glycerol molecule that we have at the beginning with the three carbons we have these OH groups hydroxide groups and we have three fatty acids that's one that's two and that is three three fatty acids we're gonna put these together we're gonna saw these together um, by these ends okay in the process water is gonna be lost we're gonna release water in this process and this will be the new molecule, the, the triglyceride molecule. So this is called dehydration synthesis or condensation synthesis, either one, but uh, I think I will prefer dehydration synthesis. Remember that we are ignoring uh, some of the hydrogen uh, atoms on the drawings, okay? So we are using a hydrogen from here and an OH group from, from here to form that water molecule, same here and same here, one hydrogen from this glycerol and an OH group from the fatty acid so we have three fatty acids, one, two, three, plus a glycerol, that is a tara triglyceride I am pretty sure that at this point in your life you have heard before the term saturated fat and unsaturated fat and one is better than the other for your health and so forth so we're going to review very quick what is the meaning of saturated and unsaturated fat okay to better understand the concept of saturated or unsaturated you have to know that a saturated fat or a fat saturated fatty acid is the one that has all the hydrogens it can have so let's analyze one over here so let's look at this one Let's expand it. So if you look at here, you can see that this structure has a double bond right here. So at some point, we can break one of these and make a space for one more hydrogen. So this is not totally saturated. You still have some room over here for uh, hydrogen. So this is, ca this is um, uh, classified as unsaturated. So we're going to take this one and we are going to place it over here that's unsaturated now let's look at this other one here huh. wow this one is very interesting in here you can see that we have one double bond here one more over here and one more over here that's a lot that means that it's polyinsaturated because you have a lot of room for additional hydrogens so this is going to the unsaturated uh, column also so let's place it over here let's minimize this one a little bit so we can make some room so let's see what we have over here let's expand it in here we see that all the bonds are single bonds i cannot see a double bond in this structure therefore it has all the hydrogen bonds that this structure can hold but you will say hey wait a minute I see a double bond over here yeah you're right but this double bond is not between two carbon atoms see that double bond has to be between carbon atoms like this one over here and this one over here and this one over here see so this one was saturated because unsaturated excuse me because you had a double bond over here so it can have some room for one more hydrogen same with this one oops this one has a lot of room because you can see that it has a double bond double carbon bond over here over here and over here so these guys are unsaturated fats 
Now, if we go back to the analysis of this one, you don't see uh, double bonds between carbon atoms. Therefore, this one is saturated. It has all the hydrogen atoms it can hold. So this saturated, let's put it over here, and there the saturated fat. Now let's analyze this other guy over here. Hmm, let's expand it. What do you think? Okay, remember you have to focus on those carbon-carbon bonds. And, and of course, right now, we don't see... Sorry for the noise. At this point, we don't see any double bonds between carbon. So this one is, of course, saturated because it has all the hydrogens it can hold. So let's minimize it a little bit and place it under the saturated column. There you go. Saturated and saturated fats. Um, one important thing to distinguish is that most of the times when we talk about saturated fats, we are talking about animal fats. And when we talk about unsaturated fats, we are talking about vegetable fats. All right.